the plantations where I was getting my palm oil from, I realized that maybe I had a biodegradable product, but it certainly was not sustainable. Now, mind you that this here, today, is certified sustainable palm oil. I think you get the joke. This is absolutely not sustainable. This is the only thing that's sustainable. So if you're paying more for sustainable palm oil, you're being cheated on. As we are cheated on so many times in so many other ways. Apples. Yeah, there's been a lot of innovation in apples, you know, but uh, unfortunate news is that today an apple that uh, comes from Chile, shipped around the world, even with an organic label, only has 5% of the nutrition that the typical Piemontese apple will have in the Alps. The rest is gone. Now, strangely enough, we are asked to pay kilos for kilos, and we are comparing kilos for kilos. We should be comparing nutrition with nutrition. So many of the products we're buying absolutely are useless, even if they're cheap, because they don't bring the nutrition. We have lost nutrition. And we're sitting in this mindset of competing in the world market with price and quality. Who told us that? That is why I established in 1994 the foundation that was helping to prepare for the Kyoto Protocol. I have been to the COPs 1, 2, and 3, never again. I don't care about the COPs. Nothing happens there, you know what COPs, right? Paris. We need to respond to basic needs now, and this is my daughter Cheeto. I adopted her when she was 11 years old. And Cheeto learned at the age of 11 how to farm mushrooms on coffee waste. And when she knows how to farm mushrooms, her first spirit, of course, is to share with everyone else who is hungry. That makes sense. She doesn't set up a franchising shop. And when she sits down with the women in Zimbabwe here in Chipinge, when she sits down with them and says, you can take the waste of the coffee farm, which today is not used for anything at all, within two weeks you have your first harvest of wild mushrooms. You know what these women do? They get up, they sing, they dance, and they do it. You know what we Europeans do? We write business plans, <laughs> strategic analysis, technology audits, and we create committees. That's why we never get anything done in Europe. We have to create value with what we have. Don't try to compete on the basis of price. You lose all the time. There are only 10 countries that win, and the game is known. So why put yourself in a game where you know you always lose? I'm trained as an economist, and I focus on generating more value with what I have. And that is not with GMO. May I tell you the story of GMO and rice? You know golden rice? The flagship of the GMOs. Now, you're going to be very honest, and I'm so sorry that there are not all these policymakers sitting there anymore. But they should listen to the logic of GMO and rice. Why do we have a beta carotene split into the genes of rice because we're going to find blindness. Fight the blindness. Who could be against? I mean, I must say, the guy who was head of that marketing campaign, he should get awards from everyone. Because he convinced us that in order to fight blindness, you have to have GMO rice. So if the question is asked, are you in favor or against the GMO, I can't say I'm against GMO because I'm in favor of blind people being able to see. But what is the real question we should have asked? Why are people turning blind in these regions now? And what does nature do in order to avoid it? And so we find that in these rice fields, when you do it well, when you're flooding the paddies, and you're not using herbicides and pesticides, you'll immediately have a scum growing on the rice paddy, and that scum is called spirulina algae. Now guess what? 
the paddy produces 40 times more beta carotene in the water than you can ever split into the gene. So am I against GMO? No, I'm in favor of better. And this is the attitude we need to take. This is based on values, on ethics, virtue. I'm going to give you a series of projects that we have implemented with a philosophy that is nothing less than transform society, period. And in the good old Apple advertising, only the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world, maybe we'll do a little change in the world. And we have to do it. Because there's a lot of inspiration around, there are a lot of great projects around, and we have to build on what is there. But this green economy that we all wanted, I fought 30 years for the green economy. But everything that is a green economy, where what is good for you and good for the environment is expensive, is out of the game. That's for the rich. We can't build an economy for the rich. We have to build an economy for those who we don't reach today. That's why I wrote this book, The Blue Economy. Now, if you don't like blue, change the color. Over the past 25 years, we have implemented 200 projects. We've mobilized 5 billion euros in investments. We've generated 3 million jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is not if the glass is half empty or half full. <coughs> the real question is why didn't you see that the glass is full with water and air? That is the issue. We're not seeing what we have before us and therefore we don't realize projects that are transformative. Fiji. This was 22 years ago, our first farming project in Fiji. Integrated fish farming. No, it's not integrated fish farming, it's integrated biosystems because we decided to apply the five kingdoms of nature. We have to have mushrooms, we have to have bacteria, we must have the microalgae, we must have animals, we must have, we must integrate it into one system. This outcome beats tilapia fish. And we have 15 tons of fish per hectare, three meters deep, what we call 3D fishing and we don't have to feed the fish. Do you think we can outcompete the lapias? Easy. Because we don't feed them. How come we don't feed them? Because we have an ecosystem that feeds the feed of the fish, the bent of the soil plankton, the feed of plankton, the grass. That's what we have to do. And we are in need of thinking through what can we do. Tomatoes, another one of our initiatives where we started more than 20 years ago with Charlie Patton. I don't know if you know him. Charlie came to my office in Tokyo and said, Gunther, we're using too much water in agriculture. Everyone is complaining about the agriculture and the water. It's true, 70% of the water that we consume in the world is for agriculture. So we set out on something very crazy. We said, what if we can have farming that produces drinking water? We were called crazy. It's nice to be crazy sometimes. I'm not going to go through the technicalities. We can go over it in lunch. But basically, we take the salt water, let it go through the ground, we change the dew point, and guess what? This little initiative in Port Augusta that started with 200 tons in 2009, today is producing 17,000 tons of water, and for every kilogram of water, we're producing 25, sorry, for every 25 kilograms of tomatoes, we produce water. Tomatoes that produce water, we've changed it. We do 3D farming, that means at the bottom we have squashes. We have, we, because if you're on the bottom, you're gonna have blight. So you don't wanna have the blight, so you have another plant growing there. We could take it up six meters. Now this is 100% self-sufficient in energy and produces net three million tons of water a year. That is the farming of the future, ladies and gentlemen. It's an incredible island where the farmers decided to change the rules of the game. Starting with the fishermen, I mean, they realized that poor fishermen, no future, overfishing. And I said, no, it's not overfishing. You're killing the females with eggs. Don't you see that? Why don't you change your fishing technique? I mean, the whales know how to do that. The dolphins know how to do that. They fish with air bubbles. Why do you insist on fishing with nets? So we had this reserve created in La Restinga, in the southern part. 
And in that reserve today, ladies and gentlemen, we have ten times the fish stock of the rest of Spain. Ten times. Why? We don't kill females with eggs. Make sense? But it's not difficult to make yourself competitive with an organic. If you change the business models, if you focus on what it is. Now that island has gone on with a lot of other projects I don't have time to go into has gone to become the first island in Europe that is self-sufficient in water and in power. Now there's 20 million hectares of thistles growing around the Mediterranean. What do you do with it? You throw glyphosates on it. Roundup is so happy that you are, as European Union, legislating the destruction of thistles. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is an artichoke. Don't fool around with it. And here are the products that can be derived from it. What mulching material are you using for your farms? Is it made from biodegradable materials? That is reviving a territory like Sardinia? And instead of calling a herbicide, are you crowding out the other plants by strengthening the system that exists? Are you or not? And you on the farm, are you using lubricants that are made from a thistle? Or are you using, like 98% of everyone else, lubricants that are synthetic? And every drop from that synthetic lubricant will destroy your soil for decades to come. Do we realize that more, more or less 90% of all the enzymes and bacterial enzymes we use for cheeses are genetically modified? Thanks to a Danish company called Dogzymes? or a Dutch company called His Procards. They just go around there. It's not only Monsanto, huh? There are a couple other ones around and they hide behind the Monsanto game. I'm very proud that this initiative for the thistles in Sardinia is actually undertaken in a bankrupt, closed down petrochemical facility. Biorefinery takes over petrochemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be partners. We gotta work together. This is a time to transform into change. Nova Monte has already transformed four factories in Italy, and there are at least another 500 to go. That is the business of the future. We have to go beyond the mere organic. We have to get ethics at the center, and what you are representing with your organization for some decades is ethics. It's life, celebrating life, and let's go to the rooftops here. When you have a roof, I added this in because people talk about the cities. You have a roof, you have an air conditioning system, then you have a spirulina farm. We're planning with Leclerc, Hypermarché Leclerc, we're planning to do a hundred spirulina farms in France. Because they have everything. The roof space, enormous. The heat system as well. The nutrition base as well. The CO2, they have everything. So they've decided to do it. In Campaign, the first one is opened. Coffee. Coffee has been a favorite thing of us, but you know what we've forgotten is that when we drink a cup of coffee, we're only ingesting in our body 0.2%. I mean, it's the most wasteful consumption behavior we have in the world. Well, no, it's only beaten by tea drinkers. Tea drinkers only use 0.1%. And they throw away the leaves. It's amazing. So again, my daughter is teaching that, and that works very well. But you know, by the way, I didn't tell you that she's doing 500 times more in revenue than you can get from the coffee. Because she grows mushrooms on the coffee waste. So we have created this complete chain for coffee. And the first one is, of course, you drink the coffee, then you eat the mushroom. The waste of the coffee is rich in amino acids, excellent feed for the chickens. You don't have chickens, give it to your dog. We mix now textiles with coffee because coffee is a great odor absorbent. We can put it into carpets. We are now insulating with polyurethane we blend it with coffee. And now we even put it into paint. Have you ever heard of coffee put in paint? Now, what is the price you pay for a fair trade and organic coffee? It's $800 a ton. How much do you think we're getting for coffee when you put it into a paint because it helps block ultraviolet? $3,500 a ton. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of transformation of farming we need. And it's only the beginning. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, organic farming is not farming anymore. It's the fertilizers, it's the animal feed, it's the food products, it's the cosmetics, it's the pharmaceuticals, it's the energy. 
but we have to find new ways to generate opportunities. We have to scan for the opportunities. Don't fight with those European bureaucrats. You're going to fight yourself to death. You've got to focus on getting things done on the ground. Last words. La madurez consiste en realizar los sueños. You reach maturity in life when you reach your dreams. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's the old story. The new story is that maturity in life is achieved when you go beyond your dreams.